Hey there, how's it going? Well, I've been having a number of conversations with some anti-capitalists, actual communists, uh, the dictionary definition of socialist. It would seem that the biggest problem they have with our culture is that it's so focused on possessions, ownership, and property. I mean, property is obviously important to people. I mean, it's why people are so concerned over rioters destroying property. And some people have recently went to the degree of trying to claim that violence against property is a myth because violence has to be against another living thing. And I'm like, well, according to the dictionary definition, um, that's not the case. It's It can be against property. It can be against living things and objects, you know, towards anyone or anything. But this whole changing what words mean is just another example of trying to manipulate language to push a narrative. Now, I get people trying to say that property shouldn't have more value than human life. Well, of course not. But that's taking things to extremes. But possessions, ownership, and property are some of the cornerstones of this country. Is it a good thing? Not necessarily. There are definitely bad things about it, but they're not all bad. Trying to artificially remove those things from society will be seen as an attack, and rightly so. Our government and our entire economic system are based on those things, or partly on those things, as well as some other things, but they're not as prominent. If you change the culture, the economic system and system of government will eventually change as well. If it doesn't fall apart first, right, in the process. If you change the economic system, then the system of government and the culture will eventually change. If everything doesn't fall apart in the process of trying to do that. The focus on possessions, ownership, and property have created the consumerist society we live in today. Is consumerism a good thing? Well, it's a double-edged sword, as far as I'm concerned. Consumerism is why there's the latest iPhone, the Cybertruck, 5G, Hollywood movies, big-budget video games, hilarious commercials. But it's also responsible for people feeling like they have to have something better than everyone else. It pushes this notion that if you don't have at least what everyone else has, then you're pathetic, you're a loser, that sort of thing. That you need to constantly try to impress other people, keeping up with the Joneses, maybe trying to impress a woman. It's what makes people work harder so they can have better things. And when they have better things, it makes people feel like they've accomplished something, like they've really achieved something. Have they actually achieved something? Well, it's a matter of perspective. I'm a bit utilitarian in that respect. I mean, if you're actually utilizing and very much using the things that you buy and you're doing great things with them, hey, that's awesome. I certainly look at that as being better than someone who buys something just as a status symbol or something, you know? Or people who buy expensive things so they can look like they're really good at something even though they don't know shit. But you know, whatever makes you feel better, I suppose, right? And ownership can obviously be taken way too far. I mean, people used to think they could own other people, and there's still leftovers of that kind of mindset today. It's unfortunately still very common to see parents treating their children as property, and in some cases even as possessions, especially pretty little girls. Many people treat their pets this way. Sometimes people treat their children and their pets like status symbols, like trophies. I mean, as far as possessions, when people put material things far above human life, yeah, that's a problem. Now, some people would argue that we need to rid ourselves 
of the possessive parts of our culture entirely, but I think a certain part of it is just human nature. I mean, I'm not saying we should put it up on a pedestal, but I think we should acknowledge that it's within us. When I see people argue that we should get rid of the possessive part entirely, it's often coupled with trying to get rid of ownership and property as well. You know, John Lennon's imaginary utopia. Let's all hold hands and sing, Happiness is a warm gun. I mean, to be fair, the way that a lot of employers unfortunately look at their employees is like from a master to a slave. The employers pretty much own their employees. Now, you know, the employees can leave, but then they don't have a job. It'd be nice if this sort of thing wasn't the case so much. So yeah, I mean, there's obviously some areas we should probably reconsider our priorities and really look at what we've allowed ourselves to be. But I don't think we should push to fundamentally change our society, especially not try to do it in, like, less than a generation. You know, try to change some things, but don't try to push for a, a, fun, a complete fundamental change. I mean, you can hope for it, but to try to push it in, you know, oh, let's, let's do this in 10 years, right? I mean, besides not even being possible, it could easily backfire and send us into social regression. Sure, right now, with the pandemic destroying our morale, our sense of unity, and our ability to have fun, and with the rioting becoming so normalized that people are making excuses and trying to claim that violence against property isn't actually violence, so they can keep moving the goalposts in what is considered acceptable, it seems like this is the perfect opportunity to try to force change. You know, don't let a good crisis go to waste. But it's honestly not very advisable. If all this keeps up, then when people push back, it's going to be ugly. And some people, especially on the left, are not going to understand the pushback. Some people just aren't going to see it coming. I guess those people are just not very observant. Anyway, thanks for watching.